Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And Sean from Tested. And at the end of 2015, we wanted to share with you some of our favorite gear of this year. Yeah. Things you started using that you can't live without. So Sean, what do you have today? Well, normally I'd bring in a lot of actual toys, but I, the budget's been a little tight this year, but I brought in my other toys, which are tools, mm. an organization, a passion of mine. Yes. Okay. So let's, let's start with the organization trays here. So. Uh, one of my favorite earliest videos uh, when te uh, Adam came on was the Sortimo yes. sorting trays. I was just like, oh. they're they're wonderful. German, I looked them up. They're just so ridiculously expensive. expensive. Yeah. So I started looking around, and I, I've i been a longtime fan of uh, these, which uh, some people were asking about during the Falcon build. Mm -hmm. um, Plano boxes, which... Uh, I think they mainly started out making um, fishing tackle boxes. Oh. Um, so they make the big like fold outs things, but these are great. Uh, and I've been using these for many years for both Lego and uh, small part storage. Sorting your Lego. When you're oh. building a 5,000 piece kit, kind of yeah. becomes important. To when when to your lay collection out. gets that big, it gets a little unwieldy. You need some way to do it, you know. And, and the they walls have, come out? They have lots of dividers. And the, the real key here is they fit really snugly, like because a lot of these type of boxes I found, the dividers tend to come loose and then the, all the parts slide underneath them and it's a disaster. So there's lots of dividers and they fit snug. And, and you close these, it. These, and it's clear enough that you can actually th see through the top to, to you know, get an idea what's in there. Flip upside down, shake it around, no problem. They won't yeah. move and from container to container. Plano makes lots of stuff from really tiny ones to gigantic ones. And you can, I found you can get them most places like Home Depot and Lowe's or like Cabela's, stuff like that, mm -hmm. or Amazon. And they're, they're real economically, I, I haven't bought any for a while, but they were pretty, pretty nicely priced. Very sweet. And, and then moving up from that, this was my Sortimo replacement, which I think uh, we've talked about a little bit before, but Stanley makes a really nice organizer. It's got a crystal clear top. It's got uh, uh, removable bins of different yes. sizes and they can be you know moved around anyway. And so you can come in here and just grab the trays of particular parts that you need and take them with you. Um, and the other thing I like is that I'll buy like a few of these and maybe one is made up of nothing but the small ones. Mm -hmm. And then I have like the one that has all the big stuff in it. And they're great. And the other the other great thing about this is uh, I found on Thingiverse, you can download and print custom uh, bins to go in this, really? which I thought was great. That's neat. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't gotten to that level yet, but yeah. still. Um, and they're like on Amazon, they're like 11 or 12 bucks, which you huh. cannot beat. Yeah. And they, they have a, uh, their, their fat max system, which is maybe twice as deep and they have bigger bins, but they're a little, it, it, I don't know why the price term, but it's like 25 or $28. Mm -hmm. But stack on makes an almost identical one with the deep, deep pocket uh, bins and, and bigger for like $15. So I can't recommend these enough. One of my future projects is to make some kind of uh, drawer system like Adam has right. because, yeah, because they stack great, but they get heavy with all that stuff in it. So yeah. I, I, I'd love something you could just like, you know, draw, oh draw them in the place. I like that. And then, actually... and then some P touches on the handle here. <laughs> yeah, it's gotta be good. Yeah, you can 3D print your own. You actually probably then design like Tetris. Yeah, yeah. Bins. it's great. So yeah, a thing of verse, if you just look, I think, I just uh, searched for Stanley organizers and they and they popped up. So pretty, pretty nice. I, I love these things. Cool. So shall we, shall we yes. move on? So let's move on. So uh, uh, along projects, I'm, I'm currently working on a top secret tested project and you did some various uh, different wirings for. And so the typical, I know this is kind of, this is really nerdy, but this makes a big difference. So your typical wire is like PVC coated wire that, I mean, it's just, it's pretty standard. And it's it's flexible, but it doesn't tend to like to hold its position. And it still is kind of stiff so that, uh, I use I used to use this in the TARDIS. So when you'd have to put the lid on the TARDIS and it would always fight you when you're trying to put the lid down with the light attached to it. And you know, kind of a pain. Um, another one that I would always use is, so this is, uh, typically this stuff is stranded. So it's lots of little strands put together in a PVC uh, jacket. Um, there's also for when you're working on projects where you need the wire to stay put, mm -hmm. uh, I'll get solid core wires. So solid core wires is one continuous thing. So you can bend it into little nooks and crannies and it's going to stay uh, where you put it, which is really nice. Maybe a little piece of tape on there. But then you need the opposite end of the spectrum, which is super flex wire, mm -hmm. which I've found is, is a little hard to find and it can be expensive. And I found 
this silicon uh, covered wire from Adafruit, who I love. Uh, yep. I get a lot of my stuff from, from them. And they've been selling this really flexible, awesome silicon wire. And it just, it's beautiful. So I've been using it in a lot of projects because it just, it, it's strong as this, but it just has a lot more flex to it. An added bonus is that because it's silicon, it'll go up to like 200 degrees Celsius. Uh, so if you have like heat applications, like maybe in a 3D printer or something mm -hmm. like that, it works really good. And if you bundle a few of these together, it also works really well for like uh, wiring harnesses. Mm. So once again, 3D printer, uh, the wiring harness on mine, uh, my, my printer at home was really stiff. And so it broke after moving back and forth so many times. So you can make a little wiring harness or replacement stuff out of this. It's perfect for that. They sell in different gauges? They do. I think uh, this is 26. I think they have up to down to like 30 mm -hmm. and they have a whole rainbow of colors. Wow. Uh, so I uh, ate a fruit and they have it in like meter lengths and they have it in like 25 foot rolls. Very cool. Silicon yeah, great, wire. great stuff. Great stuff for, for projects. And then other projects you've been working on, uh, a lot of it involves 3D printing. Yes, as always. And so what else you got? Well, I, I, I brought this in to talk about, but we, we this kind of also uh, brings up a history of uh, bed adhesion. So one of the biggest problems you run into with 3D printing uh, is getting your print to stick to the print bed. Um, it used to be harder, um, or if you're still an ABS printer like myself, ABS is very challenging to get to stick on the bed because it's so thermally dynamic that in particular, if you're doing something big and flat, it wants to curl up and warp mm -hmm. at the edges, mm -hmm. edges as it cools. Yeah. Um, PLA, which is becoming more and more common, uh, and that's what you see on most printers, is much easier to work with and sticks to the bed relatively easily. Masking tape? And um, yeah, some, some painter's tape. The, the, Acetone. Yeah, um, I've been doing a lot of printing on the Ultimaker, which has the glass bed. Mm -hmm. Now that's heated, so if you go up to about 60 degrees uh, Celsius with the PLA, it'll stick right to the glass mm -hmm. as long as it's clean. Yes. Um, but I wanted to try ABS on Ultimaker. Now the Ultimaker, does a great job, but it um, because it doesn't have a fully enclosed uh, uh, printing area, uh, ABS can be challenging because you really want it to be like a little oven in there and retain the heat. Uh, so because it has the open top and, and front, it can be a little problematic. So I was having pro problems getting the ABS prints bigger stuff to stick to the bed. So a typical thing and what they send with uh, the uh, the Ultimaker or other printers is just a regular old office supply glue yep. stick. So you put some of that on there and that worked okay for smaller stuff, but it did not really fit the bill for that. Other stuff, uh, hairspray is another mm -hmm. big uh, popular one. And that worked much better, but still I couldn't, I was still having issues with the bigger stuff. Um, then you get into like a, a long history. You have Kapton tape, which is expensive and finicky yeah. to put on without getting bubbles in. It gives you a great surface, but you know, and, and I would use, use some melted ABS on that or maybe some hairspray kind of a pain. Uh, this has, happens to be a Dremel one, but this is a Dremel branded, uh, this is BuildTac, which I talked about in last year's favorite oh, things. Yeah. It works great, uh, but I found that ABS almost sticks too well <laughs> to this. It works great for PLA. Um, and then I haven't even gotten to uh, test this one as thoroughly as I want, but Zebra pa Plate uh, sent us one to test out. And this is kind of cool because it's reversible and kind of flexible and you kind of mm -hmm. flex it and it'll pop off. Works really good for PLA, but n not as recommended for ABS, right? So I was shopping around and um, I found this stuff, Wolf Bite. Wolf Bite. Wolf Bite, sounds exciting, right? Yeah. Uh, put up by Airwolf. Um, and I, is $20 for this little magic potion. I was really skeptical, but I was like, ah, you know what? I've tried everything else. I might as well. So they, they advertise this specifically an adhesion uh, aid for ABS. So I got it and I tried it out and it actually worked really well. So you apply it to the print bag? <laughs> yeah. So it comes, with, it comes with a little foam brush. Mm -hmm. um, I, you just brush it lightly on the glass. Now I found uh, their recommendation is you put it on, then heat it up. I actually found that it worked a little better with the bed a little warm, and you just keep going over it until it thins out really nice and kind of starts to evaporate. Mm. And I found I had my best results with that. Awesome. Um, and it really did. It stuck the ABS down really well. Um, it came off relatively easily, and it in one coat will get you a few uses. You can take a damp ta paper towel right. and just kind of smear it around to refresh it. 
Um, and it has worked surprisingly well. I was, like I said, I was skeptical. It sounds a little silly, but it, it actually worked. And uh, I think... I think they're actually running like a two for one sale uh, on this right now. So cool. um, it's kind of part of your essential tools kit for 3D printing. It has, yes. Wow. And I don't know. I've tried to find out what is in this magic potion, but I don't know. I have not been able to figure. That's why it's out, magic, so. Sean. I don't know. Awesome. Well, but, you got yeah. 3D printing accessories, mm -hmm. essential tools, wiring, and organization. organization yes. Awesome. These things you can't live without. Thank you so much <laughs> for coming in and sharing this with us. Absolutely. And we'd love to hear from you guys. If you are 3D printers or if you are crazy for organization, what are the things that you can't live without? What are the tools you use? Post them in the comments below. But we'll have more stuff on Tested, sharing our favorite things from this year with you guys. Until then, that's Sean. I'm Norm. We'll see you next time. See ya.